Gold is basically the best sleeping aid there is. I think you found the headline for your next newsletter. You're crazy if you don't have a gold coin. It's not too late to buy it. People in America, they're just so distorted. People don't spend money in the US. They hoard it and it constantly is being devalued. It's crazy. Spend some of the money. Why else are you working? But maybe you're wealthy, you could do that. It's relative. It's relative. Do you, are you saying even if go, you go into debt over it? No. You can live like the billionaire now. It's all about your mindset. The billionaire mindset is nothing to do with private aviation or like having a yacht or something. It's nothing to do with that at all. It's about... Cambone, welcome back to the Daniela Cambone show here on ITM Trading. And today I have uh, one of the people I call when I just need someone to tell me things straight up, no nonsense, no BS. Please welcome back E.B. Tucker, best-selling author of Why Gold, Why Now. He also has an outstanding newsletter called The Tucker Letter, which we'll talk about today. E.B., my friend, always good to see you. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, how have you been? How are you? Well, pretty good. I, I don't know what's been. Ha I don't know when the last time I saw you was. I've, I've been writing the Tucker letter, which is a, yeah. a beacon, a beacon of truth in uh, otherwise confusing world. Absolutely. Uh, well, I want to start with that because I I love the letter, and I want to actually go through uh, some expert excerpts. I love uh, from some of them. Let's start with your latest, Machine Gold. I mean, look, you wrote Why Gold, Why Now? I mean, are you loving what you're seeing in gold? It's, it's funny because usually I, I write something and then it, it takes a while and then it happens and I'm kind of over it and onto something else. So uh, I, I gave a speech last week uh, at a conference about gold and I just, I just kind of feel like there's nothing left to say about it. I mean, um, so I'm going to talk about it this week in the newsletter uh, for the subscribers about why it's doing what it's doing, because the thing people don't understand why it moves. Like the, the price has nothing to do with physical demand. It's 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 there's a whole different driver behind the price. So I'm explaining that to people in the letter. And then I'm basically saying, I mean, you're kind of crazy if you don't have a little bit of gold, but um, it's not too late to buy it. In fact, all the dealers tell me that five to one is the sale ratio. Like basically if they take, six phone calls, five of them are sellers and one's buyer. And, and and that tells you that the price will go a little bit higher because a lot of people have owned it since 2010 or 11 when Mr. T was doing commercials and they say, now I can get out of this, you know, and get rid of it. Well, this is like psychology 101, you know, so people are selling, it means it's going to go a little bit higher, but the price isn't set by your neighbor buying or selling a coin. It's, or the Costco people, everybody's talking about Costco. And it's like, well, it's fine. You can buy those bars are like kind of boring at Costco. I mean, I don't know. You could do better than that. But basically, the price will go a little bit higher. And it's got a little catching up to you. So probably 2500 2600 you know, it's probably sensible, maybe a little higher, go to 100 bucks higher. But it's kind of like, why gold, why now? You knew this would happen. You already you knew when what to do about it all this stuff and uh, is is it interesting I mean maybe it's just me but how gold just goes to work for you I mean do you think that's a good summation I mean of what so it does? so so I have a friend who is like a major player in the commodity space trading wise and he didn't have any gold and I just told him you got to get some gold and he's like well why should I have it because it's dead money. And I'm like, you know what? It's life is not really about spectacular gains or something like that. I mean, gold is basically the best sleeping aid there is. I mean, seriously, you 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 sit there with this stuff. And now, anyway, so my friend my friend bought it, and I said, "How do you feel?" And he goes, "Man, I love this stuff. I got it all over my desk. I got it all over my house. I got it everywhere." That I just I I feel like people in America like they 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 they're just so distorted. Like, look, I mean, if you have any money at all, like if you have enough money that you can watch this video, that means you have like enough. I mean, you're doing okay, right? Because you're not like right. in a hole, you know, like like covered in sweat digging or something. So so 
you're crazy if you don't have like a gold coin. You're just, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's crazy. And, and everybody is like, well, I can't tie my money up with that, but it's like, why not? I mean, I own my house. Like I would never have a mortgage. I mean, I remember my granddad was on the board of a bank and he told me like he bought a house, like when I was like 15 for, yeah, he bought a house for like 700 grand. He wrote a check for it. He was like explaining this to me. And he's like, people are crazy to get a mortgage. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but you, you work for the bank, right? He's like, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not crazy to give them a mortgage, you know, cause they, they like make payments for their entire life. But my point is sometimes you do things in life, like buy a gold coin that don't really make any sense. Like it actually doesn't really make any sense to buy a gold coin, but there's something about it. You, you buy the coin, you put it on your desk, you look at it, you know, you let your kids play with it yeah. and you think yeah. to yourself, this is pretty nice. This is pretty good. You know, I kind of like I, this. I think you saying that is the best sleeping aid is such a perfect, uh, uh, really, you know, description of of what gold should be and you and I know the you know the biggest players in this um in the gold industry EB and do you find it interesting that well, well the there's common... like four people in the whole business right now. it, it <laughs> well, was a, it okay, was in the bear but, market for like 20 years so it's but you know what's and interesting you and like Pierre that's it that's all that's left <laughs> okay yeah. but okay but like I'm talking the billionaire people yeah. Now, obviously, they have a sense of calm because they're billionaires. But the, the thing that I found interesting is that when you speak to them, none of them is really checking the spot price daily or hourly. Like they're just there's a sense of calm. And again, I get it. They're billionaires. But there's a sense of peace and tranquility and calmness that they own gold. And, you know, wh wh whatever cycle gold's in, but they're just always calm about it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can be calm too, right? I mean, that that. So I'm writing a new book now that's not like about um, you know financial matters per se. Yeah. You know, it's more about life stuff. And I feel like I feel like people need to understand. I'm going to tell stories in the book that are mildly embarrassing, and uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because I think people need to to have a firsthand account of real life situations that I've been through so that they can understand that you can live like the billionaire. Now you can, you, it's all about your mindset. Like, so, so people think, well, I can't do that until I'm rich. Like for instance, they, they, they always think like, well, I can't, you know, uh, be reach a physical goal or, or like, uh, enjoy myself until I do all it's nonsense. I mean, the, the billionaire mindset, has nothing to do with private aviation or like having a yacht or something. It's nothing to do with that at all. It's about setting your life up so that you can think clearly and have stability. And what happens is, is that your, 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 your life gets on this track that is so much better that everything else gets better. So, your stock investing does get better. Your relationship does get better because what you take the time to get your structural foundation right. And so I'm going to show people that that someone taught me that. And and when I was like really struggling and in a very different place, I had these habits that set my life up to be the way it is today. And you can do that. So the person when they're done reading my book, it's like they're they can say, you know what, I can do this. I mean, I can, I, it's really like the billionaire didn't start acting this way once when they made a billion dollars. They, they didn't like then all of a sudden decide that they would like have this way of living. They, they did this a long time ago. And, and the proof is, is that a lot of people, okay, I know a lot of people that, that built this big company, sold it, made a pile of money, and it's the worst thing that ever happened to them. So, so what you're going to find is the billionaires you're talking about set their thinking right long ago. And then whatever, it wasn't like they said they got this pile of money dumped on them and then they got good life habits. Those people actually run into a lot of trouble. Like they actually, it's worse for them once they get the thing they've been seeking the whole yeah. time. Does yeah. that make sense? I, I don't, I, yeah. I don't want people to be confused about this. It's not confusing at all. Like, I'm going to tell personal stories about 
I, people that I, I advised to, to think this way, they did not. They ran right off a cliff. Okay, so, um, no. so you can do this now, and I'm telling you, it's very profitable, and uh, you'll have more fun, and you'll see things in a different light. And the bad news is, is that you probably have to get rid of about 90% of your friends, because people actually, like, oftentimes want to hold you back, and they're uncomfortable if you start evolving. And so I'm going to say this so. and, and then, then you're going to realize that, that it's the same story all the time. Like, you know, you can't, can't leave the neighborhood you grew up in, can't, you know, leave your middle school friends. And then you wonder like nothing changes. So sometimes like the downside of making these changes and evolving, the upside is, is that the cash and prizes are, are great. Uh, and the happiness and the peace of mind and the and the lower blood pr pressure and the, the you're going to live longer and you're going to look better and, and it's going to be way more fun. The downside is, is that, you know, people that are stuck in crabs in a pot of boiling water. I mean, you, you got to get away from these people. And and I'll use myself as an example to do that. I mean, people are not going to be happy. Some people in my life that, you know, were involved because I'm not going to like I'm not going to embarrass them, but I'm. I'm just going to tell it like it, like it happened. And cause my life has unfolded in three parts. And the third part that's happening now, I can show people what I do now to, you know, to control how this ends up. I, like where I'm going to be in five years is set up by what I'm doing now. So let's not get totally lost. Gold is an important part of this because, you know, as you, no, as you progress, I, you know, you can stabilize your ship by taking yeah. a tiny bit of gold. A lot less than you think, by the way. I mean, I know you're in the business, but like even just, you know, a very small percentage of of your the money you earn like goes a long way. I mean, you, you really don't need to go crazy with gold. Just just a little sprinkle is enough. Um, and I want to get back uh, to talking life with you because that's one of my favorite things to do. Well, when's the book, new book coming out? I think I How can far? be, well, I mean, I, I, I got it going in January and then I took a sabbatical and uh, then I picked it back up because one of my friends beta read the first 20% and was like, you have to keep writing this. And so I think by the end of June, I can be done. And so I'm saying All that right. on air. So, it's okay. a little so bit maybe, pressure. maybe this year. Fast. I mean, I, I, it's like, like, I mean, the, 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 okay. the problem is time. Just so you know, I, I'm the busiest unemployed guy. Because, by the way, you I sound like Rick of, Rule. There's a lot. You're sounding uh, like Rick Rule. Well, a little different, well. but there's, but there's. I think there's a lot of confusion <laughs> because, because uh, a lot of people don't know that I'm, I'm not on any boards. Okay. Yes. Like, I have not been on any boards for a long time. The problem is, is that the boards that I, I resigned from, buried the news on like the. 37th page of an otherwise unreadable press release. I mean, can we talk about that? Or sure. I don't want to talk yeah, about I mean, it. I mean, I you just, okay. Look, I mean, I, 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 okay. When you're, I think I was telling you earlier, my, my granddad sat on boards. I learned about this. My granddad right. taught me how it all works. Okay. Basically what happens is, is I always loved stocks since I was, a, I was like a bad kid and I was a poorly behaved. I'm going to talk about that in the book. But my granddad taught me about, I loved working. And so he's like, look, you know, when you own a stock, you own the company and you never have to even go to work there. So that just like really was a light bulb that went off. So I love stocks since I was a kid. And what happens is you own stock, you get to vote for directors. Now the directors mm -hmm. work for the shareholders. Now mm -hmm. the directors have to then hire management. So everybody thinks the CEO is the guy you want to be, but it's like, it's complicated because the CEO works for the board and the board works for the shareholders. Now I served on a board of a company that I, what happened was, is that a guy that I knew had an idea and I got excited about this idea. And so I, I got behind the idea and I bought a lot of stock. Like, okay, we're talking think, Matala. That's, that's the company. And now I bought a lot of stock. So like you think, you know, you are bothered by gyrations in the stock. Like you should, sit over here for a minute. I mean, I bought a lot of stock. So I got very excited and, and I did everything I could to help this company also to be on the board. Now things change, right? I mean, uh, I was on there seven years, basically seven years. So a lot of stuff changes. I mean, this went from one asset to like a hundred, you know, it was like, it was like a lot of stuff changed. And, and I, I increasingly felt a divergence 
there. Like, like, like a lot, it just, it's not, people say like, well, yeah, I mean, it should be permanent. Everybody wants things to be permanent, right? I mean, look, in the eighties, I watched the Cosby show. Now, none of us watch the Cosby show, right? It's like, things change Mm -hmm. and you got to kind of like change with the times. Right. But my point is, is that I got to a place where I wasn't very happy with how things were going. And I also felt that I was, uh, I'm also not the kind of person that like, you know, runs an activist campaign of one or something causing tons of problems. I give my opinion and that's my job. And then it's the executive job not to take it. Anyway, so I, I resigned from the board with lots of notice, by the way, like with tons of notice. You know, anyway, this was a long time ago. This was a way back in 2023. And I think people are unaware of that because I notice I write a newsletter about like uh, something totally unrelated. And I get like some hostile person that thinks well, I'm the owner of Metalla, but it's not well, true. I think because you were you were synonymous with Metal. I mean, right? but like look, you were, the you were doing is, a great job promoting, you were talking like, Metallica. So people yeah, thought Evie Tucker, I, they I, thought Metallica. I get it, but you got to understand. Just like something. I was They're, synonymous with another company before I this. It. So I you understand. become tied to companies. <laughs> it, it's not, it's not, it's not my fault really that I, I bought a lot of stock when I'm excited. I, I tell you about, I and mean, that's why you like reading the newsletters. Cause I go, I yeah. went to, I bought gold from an, an ATM. Okay at a gas station and I thought it was yeah, really Yeah, I read cool. that one. And so I, yeah. I, I went around town and tried to spend the money. It's really hard. Y- yeah, and yeah. I write about that. Now, when you're done reading it, you're like, whoa, but it's not my fault that I'm excited about that and tell it. No, so the, the bottom line is, is that like, there were seven directors last year, you know, two resigned, you know, at Mattel, but nobody knows the name of any of the other ones. So like, well, okay, if you're gonna buy the stock, like go to the website, read the presentation, ask the company questions, get involved. I mean, one director does not own the company. I bought like one and a half percent of the company or something. Right. So that's like a lot, you know, but the fact is, is that, is that like, I was doing that, you know, years ago and like, I had to make filings and all this sort of complicated and I'm not doing that anymore. Okay. So like, and I'm not involved and you know, there's a CEO, he's very well paid. There's a board, there's, there's investor people get involved, you know, figure out what you own. So, 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 and you think you don't like the price, walk a mile in my shoes. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, I want to bring back one of your past newsletters. I thought this one was interesting because this one was called Fallen Angels. Because I have so many people coming on, telling me, talking to me about the debt, how they can't sleep over the national debt. But EB writes, believe it or not, the national debt is not the big problem today. While the U.S. debt doubles under every eight-year presidential term, it barely makes up 10% of world debt. You're not It's going to go sleep. higher and higher and higher. So, okay, so, what do you so think here, about here, it? Here's, the, here's it, 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 the secret is it actually does not really matter at all. And, and that is so hard for people to understand because they think about that. Like, like I was with a, a, one, a huge Morgan Stanley broker last week, and he's given me this like speech about, we got to elect the, I'm like, look, man, my cousin's running for Congress. I mean, like, you know, he's hundred percent smart enough to realize you've got to get on that gravy train. Right. I mean, this thing is going higher and higher and higher. Now the, the way to get around this a little bit is to realize that as long as the GDP keeps growing and tax receipts grow and the whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter. And, and everything eventually ends anyway. I mean, Every empire in the whole world ends. And by being kind of a a Luddite and trying to stand in front of the the trend, you're not going to do anybody any favors. So my advice to people is, is to look at it and say, yeah, this probably won't end well, but it also probably won't end for quite some time. And so what the Fed wants me to do is to make money and to pay tax. That's what they want. They actually want me to win. See, the problem with some of these gold people, like in the business, is that I'm not talking about like in the coin sale business. Those people get it. I'm talking about like, um, you know, these people pound the table about like all these these um, Ludwig von Mises ideas. Get over it. The the system is doomed. OK, it's going to it's going to thing is going to end up as a supernova that just burns out, you know, in a flame of glory. And that might be in a month or 10 years or a hundred years. Okay. 
And the national debt might be $100 trillion when that happens. Because you also might be making $2 million a year in middle class. Meantime, yeah. the Fed actually wants you to win. And the only problem is, is that you're so ideological, you're unwilling to win. Look at the stocks. Like, Okay, my point with the gold helping you sleep is, look, if you have your life set up where you got, you got a little bit of gold, you know, maybe you got like a little tiny, tiny bit of Bitcoin, you got a house, you know, you got, you got your life. You haven't lived like you're filming a rap video, okay? You got your life set up where you're very happy. Own some stocks. Like, own some, look at this last year. Everybody that's like sitting around being like, there's going to be a crash. Maybe, but meanwhile, what have you done? I mean, there's, there's, the, the thing is like levitating. So, I mean, you know, play the game, but know it's a game. Does this make sense? What? Like, are you like, talking to my, like, play the Magnificent Seven? Play the game of American massive inflation, okay? Like, when I said that the debt was going to double in 2016, it was $18 trillion, I got all this hate mail about the candidates. I'm like, I'm not talking about the candidates. It doesn't matter. You could put, you could put a German shepherd in the White House, and the debt is going to double, okay? It is... It's going to double till it till it collapses, okay? And that's not going to be like in a month. What? Just on that note, what do you make of RFK uh, unveiling plans to put entire guy. U.S. I, yeah, budget the guy. on blockchain? Forget about it. I met the guy before. He's really cool, okay? And and these types of ideas, I think, are nice ideas. And but I would also I would. The trick is, is to be able to get out of your own belief, check out an idea, and then get back to navigating yourself. The problem is most people are arguing with their relatives at dinner about some thing they read in the news and are so disjointed that they can't, <laughs> they can't make yeah. money. You got to be willing to look at all these things that come up objectively. Most of these billionaires you're talking about they don't get wrapped up in some nonsensical idea that they read a story about because you, you have to play the game that's happening right in front of you. And what I'm saying is, is that um, getting too amped about a radical idea, you've got to be able to do that and then come back. Okay. So I don't think that's, I think you're going to have fed coin. I think what's, I actually don't think it's very positive. If you really started thinking about what's going to happen to the average working person over the next 10 years, you'd be, you, you, you might, your head might explode because this is the most free you're ever going to be right now. This right now, like you should leave your phone at home, go somewhere, take a trip, spend money. People don't spend money in the U S they hoard it and it, and it constantly is being devalued. It's crazy. Spend some of the money. Okay. Like, why else are you working? I mean, live life now. Like everybody always says, well, I'm going to go on a trip as soon as I retire in like 10 years. You know? No, 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 no. Now is the time to live because like you're going to be progressively more digitally tracked. And I don't think that all of a sudden there's going to be like this autonomy for people, for like the individual person. Why would there be? Like, like, why would that, why would that happen? It makes no sense. I think you found the headline for your next newsletter. Uh, I like that. Make 2 million a year. Welcome to middle class. Yeah. I mean, it's, I it's, thought... it's, 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 it's crazy. Right. New York city, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, funny. you know how yeah. In, yeah. in New York city, it's like you make yeah. a million bucks. I mean, you're in trouble. I mean, it's <laughs> unbelievable. It's unbelievable uh, how much. That's why yeah, when, I, when it's, people it's, are asking me for advice, like some younger person and they're making like 80 grand and they have like an apartment or something. I'm like, if I were you, I would just like spend it all. I mean, honestly, just like enjoy yourself. I mean, because that, that's the whole thing is, is like this, uh, all this striving in America, right? I'm not really sure that it matters. Like, like, like when I look back at this is what's happening in my book as I'm writing about this, the second chat part of the book is all about how did E.B. Tucker go from like dyslexic, you know, 
late stage adolescent to now. So I'm going to tell you the whole story. And, and when I look back on it, like I really should have had, I'm not going to say I didn't have fun. So I didn't have fun, but I was, I really took that seriously. I mean, I all of a sudden decided, you know, I was like 20 that I didn't want to be, you know, like that I wanted to do something. And I, I like was really serious like during this time. And, and a lot of my friends weren't right. And they were like, Oh, I wish I had been, but I'm like, I don't know. It's pretty, it's pretty nice to like, you know, goof off and do nothing. My point is, is that, is that like, I'm not sure, like when with my kids, like the number one thing I tell my kids, is, like, just have a good time. I mean, seriously, like some people are dead when they're 20. Like, who knows? I mean, enjoy yourself. Like, like, yeah, it's good to form good habits because that's going to set the stage for opportunity, right? Like if you, yeah. when I'm yeah. at dinner with people yeah. and they, they're like chewing food with their mouth open, I'm like, there's no way I could do a business deal with you. I can't possibly sit at the same table with you. So there's something to be said or for cut like- cut their steak like this. It's bizarre. Or what about this? Licking God. fingers. I'm no. Like, what, are, what are you, no. a dog? What? Yeah, I mean- No, so where are you eating? No. It, You'd be surprised. No. It's really hard to to take these types of things seriously and to focus when you're eating with a savage. So my point is, you have good <laughs> habits to get you ready for things. Don't get me wrong. It's not like be a slop. But my point is, is that I think sometimes doing something you love got me further than being too serious Definitely. about something. Definitely. I agree with that. I thought of you. I read um, talk about talk about uh, you know going off off here. Um, I read the recent interview Jerry Seinfeld did with GQ, and I know we talk so much about life. And I and I thought I thought of you when he said that he thinks the movie industry is just dead, and it's just ironic because he's just putting out his new movie on Netflix. But he thinks it's dead, and he said this. This is what made me think of you. Film doesn't occupy the pinnacle in the social cultural hierarchy that it did for most of our lives. When a movie came out, if it was good, we all went to see it. We all discussed it. We quoted lines and scenes we liked. Now we're walking through a fire hose of water, just trying to see it. I thought of you because we often speak about how with every passing year, like the simple things, like, do you remember EB? Because you and I are you know, about the same age. Like we look up the movie times in the newspaper. Yeah. You know, and there was such excitement to go and see Top Gun. And I mean, that was the soundtrack to my communion video. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm sharing too much. But my point is, my point is the simple things like going to watch a movie. I can't even tell you the last movie I saw. Actually, it was Paw Patrol with my kids. But you you get what I'm what I mean here. Right. Like, it's just well, so sad just, that we'll never ridiculous. have that again. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I see all the kids. I don't have a television, so I do take my kids to the movies like quite a bit because I'm not like totally weird. I mean, I just, you know, I, I don't want to have that thing. And I think it's tacky to have a giant, you know, electronic device bolted to the wall. So the thing is that I see all these kid films and like they had this new one coming out. It's all about anxiety and all the, I'm like, what is this so crazy? It's like they're teaching these kids like it's normal I to don't... be anxious. I'm not anxious Don't at all. I mean, I, I'm get like, me started. I'm like, it's it's bizarre to me yeah. because I'm I'm wondering like in the in the this week's issue you're going to see I put this chart of like this week's issue is about how the Fed ruined your house. Okay, but anyway, I have this stat in there about about yeah. the amount of Americans that are taking uh, mental health drugs. It's yeah. absolutely crazy, and it doesn't work. I mean, like if it worked, then there wouldn't be like it's growing like so fast. I mean. It, it's like if it was working, it wouldn't. It would go in the opposite way. But my point is, is that, um, is that okay? I remember I I, I, I liked all those Coen Brothers films back in the day, right? Yes. Like Raising, Raising yes. Arizona and yes. I mean, Big Lebowski. Like I mean, you can't even make these movies now. Like it would be like it wouldn't even be allowed. There'd be some there'd be some problem, you know, with the language or something like that. And uh, the reason I like these films is because I thought they were the way that that Ethan. Cohen and Joel Cohen yeah. wrote was like uh, really like you got like wrapped into the story so you were like laughing and there was like a bit of suspense and and it was fun and I thought they were very talented but now I don't uh I go see movies but like I don't think there's that much talent it's so agenda driven 
that it's very difficult to to get into the story. And if you really want to trip yourself out, watch some older movies and imagine them being made now. It's like, forget about it. I mean, some of the cultural uh, representations, like totally. films, it's like, you know, you can never even make that now. And they're classics. Uh, oh, well. That's why I'm Let's saying that this, this is the most free, like, it, this summer is coming up, right? Like, so I like to pre-book vacations. I pay for them in advance, which financially is foolish. And I do this because, like, this is the best time to live now. Like, this is the best time. So when you think about what you're going to do with your family, it's like prioritize the time. Not because you're, like, some good parent or something. Like, I don't even think I'm that good of a parent. I just... The way I see it, I'm trying to teach my kids that, like, we're doing it now, and we're doing it first class, and we're doing the high floor, and we're doing the all the tennis, and we're doing all the, you know, we're doing yeah, all that yeah. stuff now because because you, there might not be later. Like, it, I mean, what are you waiting right, for? Okay, 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 and not to get, you know, not to go down that rabbit hole. People are gonna say, okay, but Rebe, you're wealthy, you could do that. It's right? relative. Like, it's relative, okay, because but, because I planned like, for it. You know, but 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 hold on, hold on. But you're not saying to, for people to do it to the point of like, okay, fly first class, it's what stay you can at afford. the Ritz. It's what you can afford. I don't like the Ritz. Like, don't like, go okay, into so, so, debt. Do you? Are you saying so, even if it go you go into debt over it? So no. I, so let me just get something straight about because I'm a I, I stay in a lot of hotels, right? I never stay in an American chain hotel unless I'm like next to the airport or something. There are amazing non-chain hotels all over the place that are unbelievable. And the price is drastically lower than the high-end name brands. Now, here's what you got to do for vacation. You need to understand, when I was writing a blog many, many years ago, okay, I always traveled, like I do now, to write about the blog. And I traveled in really kind of busted condition, like back of the plane, multiple stops, you know, huge family of loud children crammed all around me, you know, all this stuff. That's where I was at the time. Okay. So, but what would happen is, is I was very clever about doing this and I would plan in advance and I would make that trip. And so, and so you have to plan for these things in your life. So if you're working in a, in a middle of the road job and stuff, you have to say, honey, next summer, I want to take the kids to see whatever. And this is what's going to cost. And I'm going to start now planning for this because what will happen is, is you actually will figure out the cost. You can afford it. You yeah. can definitely afford it. I mean, people do things with money that are like totally nonsensical. If you plan something important for your family and you watch your family get excited, believe me, you'll find the money. And, and uh, I think travel and seeing things is, is as important as like all this. Like it's way more important than school. I mean, I, I'm, I actually don't think school, like past uh, reading and writing, is not really very useful at all. And people spend a fortune on they education, do. They training do. So the you kid. Don't... By the oh, way, wait, that's training, a good question. Training the wait. kid to be a, a sheep. That's what they're doing. So, you so don't, you're not one of those parents who are like, it has to be private school for my kids? Oh, you want to hear something amazing? Because you know I'm a single yeah. dad. This is, this, is, yeah. this is a constant source of tension with the baby mama is that I don't yeah. even do any of the homework when they, they bring the homework and go <laughs> leave it in your back. I'm not doing any of it <laughs> because then they're like, Oh, well, the teacher's going to be upset. And I'm like, well, just to be clear, it's like the teacher works for the County. Okay. I would not call that a success. Now I'm not trying to disparage anyone here, but what I'm saying is I'll teach you about stuff. Okay. Don't worry. You need to behave in school. Like I'm big on behavior. Like you need to behave in school. It's very important that you learn how to, to behave in situations that you don't enjoy. Okay. Because you're going to have temporary situations in life that you don't like, and you have to behave so that you can like get out sitting at a restaurant table. If you're a six year old. Yeah. I'm, my kids don't eat any kid food. Okay. We, we go right. on, like, we go to Washington DC. We have, I have a hundred percent. I have a wonderful friend who's a lobbyist for big tobacco. She's like really, really funny. We sit at dinner and she's like, I don't understand. This kid just ate a seafood tower. I'm like, I know Yeah. this is, this is what they do. And, 
so you have to behave and and but you do not what you do not have to do is that the homework which is stupid and it means nothing and it's teaching you to be a good well-behaved middle management cog in someone else's machine but what i'm going to teach you is how to make the machine and so you always hear it like this the c students are the ones that end up doing big things it's not the drop it's people say the dropout so you gotta be careful because i was a dropout and then i like had to come back around and fix that so my point is is that um when it comes to i don't think education matters and look at the kids in new york that, that the parents do anything to they bribe and everything to get into these schools and these kids like it's not always a marker of success. I, I know a lot of these people and believe me, yeah, they're I, not very interesting. So, it's gotten so crazy here. I wish you were part of some of these mom combos with me because now we're looking at, you know, kindergartens or whatnot. And it's gotten, I mean, I'm talking $70,000 a year for kindergarten. Okay. That's because not the worst of it. And, and because, that's the top school in Europe because yeah. Suri Cruz, Tom Cruise's daughter went to that school and yeah. it's not a normal education system. We do things outside of the box that I'm like, really? And it's just so easy to get caught up in it. You know, especially here, like I said, in New York city with these, you got, you schools. got, if, you, if you're a parent, it's your job to help teach your kid how to learn. That's the mm. job. It's, it's not about them. This school teaches them virtually nothing. And so I'm going to, in this book, I'm going to be telling ab about, I, I had dyslexia and a lot of problems in school, like a major, major problems. And I had these little angels along the way that taught me things that changed my whole life. And you can do that with your kids. And it's, it's, it, it doesn't require $70,000 a year. In fact, it actually, all it requires is put your phone down Okay, get rid of the television and interact with them. That's what it. Right. That's what it requires. I mean, the the, yes. the Tucker kids. The Tucker kids are are actively engaged in somewhat confrontational debates with their father all weekend long, and then they go. I don't know what they do at their mom's house, but basically, I also don't care what they do at their mom's house. Like like, their choice soon is going to be the driver of what they do with their life. It's going to be their choice and they get to live like, like they get to choose how they do it and they get to make lots yeah. of mistakes and they will at least know how to, how to think, you know? And it's like, I, they'll do something. I'll say, good, that's deductive reasoning. They're like, what's that mean? I mean, so as a parent, if you're watching this, like this is the, this is the, where the action is not in the folder full of homework. I love catching up with you. Um, I enjoyed this. How do you feel about it? I think it's great. I'd like to see you more often. Yes, we will make that. We'll make that happen. And maybe, um, maybe in person, maybe, maybe, in maybe, maybe a uh, live interview in Scottsdale and we can drive around and look at architecture uh, or something like that. If you guys want to see this happen, drop your comments. <laughs> in the yeah. section below and we will make it happen. I will make it happen. I would love that. Um, endless shrimp. We're speaking ahead oh, yeah. of the fed, but <laughs> it's not going to, that was one yeah. of the EB's headlines. Uh, nothing's going to change. So must, it doesn't matter. A must, that's a must read. I love that one. Because and that, my that, husband, that, that, Matt, that, Matt, he was laughing out loud with that one. He's like, I'm not, I love EB. Yeah, um, the, the, I, I invested with this guy that runs a, uh, a real estate trailer park business. I wrote about this for the subscribers of how to get in touch with this guy. And uh, he, he started his life as a Red Lobster waiter like 20 years ago. And he told me the story of how Endless Shrimp works. And it's totally fascinating. I, mean, I was like, this is exactly what the Fed does. Like, you yeah. never actually get well, any shrimp. Your... All you get is, all I... you get is biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> Bottomless shrimp. Um, oh, that's right. let them eat shrimp. Okay. I'm having too much fun with this. All right. EB, we adore you. Get the Tucker letter. Get why gold. Why now? If you haven't read it, he has a new book coming out. Um, we'll stay on so, top of it and yeah. we will be driving a vintage car in Phoenix soon. Scottsdale. Yeah. Uh, we love you, EB. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much. EB Tucker.com for everybody that wants to find the newsletter. There you go. And I will also, uh, give a little, info here. We obviously talk a lot about uh, gold strategies, silver, 
uh, monetary strategy, a lot of good content. If you have any questions, I always urge you to reach out to one of my incredible colleagues at ITM Trading. You could do so at the Calendly link below in the description. It's a free session. You book a time that's good for you. Choose the choose the day, choose the time. Like I said, it's a free session. It's It's very informative and worth your time. So do it and sign up at daniellacombonin.com so you stay on top of all this great content. That's it for me. We will see you soon. Bye.